Thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name's Olivia and today I'm going to be talking about 10 things you should consider before deciding to attend UC Berkeley. I'm so excited to film this video because when I was still in high school and deciding on where I wanted to go, I would binge watch all of these videos just to get a better sense of what the school is like. And especially during the pandemic right now, I'm sure so many students can't tour the schools that they want to attend or are getting admitted to. So I really hope that this can kind of be a resource for people who want to get to know more about Berkeley. And for reference, I was an out of state student from South Carolina. I was a history major and I also graduated early in 2020, RIP to my senior year. But I think that because I am graduated, I've had a little bit of time to reflect on my experiences. Also, everything that I'm about to say is my opinion. That's my opinion! And from my experience, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Also, I've tried to create a little cozy ambiance. You know, I got some plants. I have a fish in the background. I have a candle that I'm trying to kill. And I kind of want this to be like, you know, you're just my friend. I'm giving you some advice. We're cozy. I'm sitting cross-legged in my little chair. I also have my cow sweater in front of me. It's a little hot, so I don't want to put it on at the moment, but go bears. The first thing I think you should really think about is the fact that Berkeley is a public school. You may be thinking like, duh, like we all knew that, especially if you're in state from California, you know that you're going to get in state tuition, which is significantly less by tens of thousands of dollars compared to what people out of state like me were paying, which is one of the reasons why I ended up graduating early because tuition is just so expensive. It's basically private school priced. But Berkeley being a public school, I think when I was touring colleges and universities, you kind of, they blend together a little bit. And you know, Berkeley is a prestigious university and I'm sure people are touring it along with a lot of Ivies and Stanford and a bunch of other really nice private schools. But I think it's important to remember at the end of the day that Berkeley is a public school. So you are not going to have all of the amenities and the resources and one-on-one -on -one attention and support that I think a lot of people receive at private universities. And I'm not saying all private universities are perfect and the students are completely supported. For reference, I was in the College of Letters and Science, which is where I believe a majority of students enter the university in. And so within LNS, you have an advisor and then within your major, you have a department advisor. And I, again, I can only speak for LNS and the history department. So the history department had an advisor who was absolutely wonderful. Like within the history department and the history major, I felt very supported. Leah, she's just incredible. If you're a history major, you will come to love her just as much as I did and as much as every other history major loves her as well. But within letters of science, like I barely knew who my advisor was never reached out to me. I had no real way to sit down and meet with her. Like going online through the LNS portal, it's very difficult to actually make an appointment with people. And it came down to the point where I could either do peer to peer counseling, which is great, but I really wanted to sit down with an advisor as I was planning to graduate, especially graduating early. Like I wanted to make sure that I was hitting all my requirements so I didn't get hung up. And I showed up to the office at 8.45 because they open at nine and already the line was at the door. I was one of the last people in the line to actually get an appointment. And so everybody else behind me just had to come back the next day. And this was in the middle of the semester. Like this wasn't during registration when things are crazy. This was at the end of the semester and all the seniors are trying to make sure they can graduate. This was just like an average day in the middle of the semester. And it was still really difficult for me to sit down with an advisor and have an appointment. And even then she cleared up my questions, but it was like an in and out 10 minute experience. And so I think if you're considering going to Berkeley, do not underestimate the fact that it is a public school. And I'm not saying all public schools have bad support for their students, but I do think at Berkeley, with it being such a humongous school, like you are going to have humongous lectures. You're going to have classes where you will not have that one-on-one -on -one support from your professor. And it is sometimes difficult to get close with your professors because this is a humongous public university. And it is difficult to find those resources and that support for yourself. Like it is up to you to make things happen and it is up to you to support yourself and to go out and find that support if you do not have it yourself so something huge to consider that Berkeley is a public school it is huge it is difficult to navigate but coming out of that and have, being a graduate now of several months I can look back and see how that shaped me into the adult that I am today like at Berkeley you're not going to be coddled your hand is not going to be held 
Okay, my next point is that Berkeley is also a research university. Another point, you may be like, uh, duh, I know that, that's why I'm interested because I want to do research. But I think people should also think critically about Berkeley being a research school. And something that I didn't really think about before I attended Cal is that because Berkeley is a research school and so much of our curriculum is focused on research, it kind of pushes you in that direction. So what I'm talking about is like, for example, instead of having a city planning major, it's urban studies. Instead of having a communications major, we have media studies. And so if you want to study something like that, just know that at Berkeley, it's going to be very research and theory centered versus more practical applications. Regardless of your major, you're going to learn things that you will actually use and apply. But in general, because Berkeley is a research university, the classes are kind of geared towards that and kind of push students in that direction, at least in my experience and talking to a couple of other people. Definitely look at the majors offered at Berkeley and really think about what you want to pursue because if you, if you know you wanna go into research, then Berkeley is a perfect school for you. But I think that's kind of the flip side of research that people don't really consider. And then the good side of it that everybody wants to talk about is research. The fact that Berkeley has some of the best professors in their fields across the board from STEM to engineering to CS to humanities. Like these professors are at the top of their fields, well respected within their fields. Like for classes, you're not just going to be doing readings from your professor because your professor wants you to. It's because they are literally writing some of the best material on the subject that they are teaching. Berkeley is just such a great school and so much important research is being done there. So I think as a student, that's incredible to be learning from the best of the best. Additionally, you have a ton of research opportunities. I know for certain fields, it's a little more difficult to actually break into those research opportunities than others. Being in humanities, I think it is just a little bit easier because it's not quite as competitive. I found it fairly easy to get research opportunities. I did research as a freshman, which was awesome. And I also did independent research during my final year for my history thesis, which was a lot of fun. So there's an abundant amount of research opportunities. Like if you are interested in something, there's probably an opportunity for you to do research with it. My next point is a little fun and that's that Berkeley has a phenomenal coffee shop scene. Like there are so many coffee shops close to Berkeley's campus. I will include a list here of coffee shops that I've been to that are close to campus and I'll put like a little star next to my favorites. This is something you might not be thinking about before attending university. Like you might just be focused on the campus and how good the libraries are, but having an abundant amount of coffee shops around campus that I can go and study at just made studying a little more exciting. Cause it's like, oh, what coffee shop am I gonna try today? And you know, they had good coffee as well. Good ambiance, good food. Also side note, sub note to this one, Berkeley also has a ton of libraries on campus. I mean, you can find that like on the website and I'm sure if you go on a tour at Berkeley, they're going to mention all the wonderful libraries on campus. So you will not run out of places to study in at Berkeley. My next point is also a little lighthearted and that's that Berkeley has a ton of green space if you go looking for it. At first, this was something that kind of scared me about Cal, about it not having green space because it felt like it was in the city and coming from a small town in South Carolina especially, I was like, I don't wanna feel like I'm trapped in an urban jungle. But Berkeley actually does have quite a bit of green space, especially if you go outside of the campus and just outside of Berkeley a little bit. Up to the west, I believe, of campus is a ton of beautiful hiking trails that like are literally not even a mile from campus. Like you can easily walk there and enjoy a beautiful hike whenever you want. There's also Tilden north of San Francisco and several other little hiking trails and nature areas around campus and around Berkeley that you can travel to if you have a car or you wanna take a bus or an Uber, however you wanna get there. We also have Memorial Glade and several parks around campus. My favorite is Willard Park. I love going there, just throwing down a towel and relaxing. And I think that if you're worried about there not being enough green space at Berkeley, to not really worry about that because there is plenty as long as you go looking for it. Also, here are some beautiful pictures from the hiking trail I was mentioning. I believe, I think I said west, I think it's east of campus. I'm horrible with directions. But yeah, I did this a ton, especially once the pandemic started. It was such an easy way to get exercise and just so breathtakingly beautiful. If you need to clear your head and you're in Berkeley, go on this hike. It's wonderful. It's not too hard. My fifth point is that Berkeley has a very rich history of activism that is still very much present on the campus today. 
Berkeley has a ton of activism going on around campus. There's so many different groups, not just limited to the university, but just in Berkeley in general. I'm sure if you were following the headlines in 2017, you'll know that Berkeley had protests that made national news. So in addition to having protests, which most of which are not like the ones you saw in the news in 2017, there's just a big culture of activism. And a lot of that has to do with the history in Berkeley with Mario Savio even protests in people's park. Being a history major, I've learned about a lot of this stuff in my classes. So yeah, if you're interested in activism, I think Berkeley would be a great school for you. This also blends well into my next point, which is that Berkeley is very diverse and friendly and accepting. Coming from a small town in South Carolina, like 95% of my high school was white. And then coming to Cal where I was in the minority and surrounded by so many diverse people that otherwise I probably would have never met or interacted with. Like that experience was so valuable to me. Something that I've said, and I think a lot of other students have said as well, is that you learn just as much from your fellow peers as you do from your classes and your professors. Just being in that environment where there's so many different people from so many different backgrounds. Next, I want to talk about housing, which I'm sure if you've done any research into Berkeley and watching these kinds of videos, people have mentioned how ridiculous the housing market is. Housing is so expensive at Berkeley. Like you are gonna be hard pressed to find a nice apartment. And I say nice as in like, it's livable for less than $3,000. So not only is rent like ridiculously expensive, so you're pretty much forced to have roommates. It's also not good quality. Like you may be thinking like, oh, $1,000 for a room that I'm sharing with a roommate. Like it must be nice. No, like it's not going to be that nice and it is going to be ridiculous rent prices. And after your freshman year, you are pretty much kicked out of the dorms and forced to find housing on your own. And so if you're a very independent person, you like having your own space, this might be a huge plus for you. Like, yay, I don't have to be in the dorms for more than one year. And for me, this was how I felt because I did not like the dorms. Like I definitely like having my own space, my own kitchen, but yeah, I think it is difficult if you're responsible for your rent totally on your own. Just know that you will be paying for it after your freshman year. And some people do get financial aid to cover that. And like I had support from my parents, which I was very grateful for. But if you are going to be on your own for rent at Berkeley, definitely consider that before committing because it is ridiculously expensive. If you go further from campus, you can find cheaper housing and the bus system is phenomenal in Berkeley. So don't be worried if you're like, oh, like I'd have to take the bus to class. Like the buses are amazing. The next thing I want to talk about is the social scene at Cal, which in my opinion can be best described as work hard, play hard. So people at Berkeley get a reputation for being really nerdy and just staying in the library all night long and not wanting to hang out and party and have fun and I just found that to be absolutely not true at all like yes people do stay in the library all night long like there are those people and like if you just want to like study all day long and not make friends and not go out like you can totally do that but at Cal I do think people go hard in the libraries but they go just as hard when we're having fun I know some people say like you need to be in a sorority in order to go to parties and have friends and to find housing and I kind of thought that going into Cal I was like oh I'm gonna join a sorority just so I have like housing guaranteed like that's not a good reason to join a sorority I was not in a sorority and I still had a great time, made a ton of friends. In my opinion, frat parties are not even that much fun. Ooh, just, they're kind of gross. And I personally had more fun at house parties or apartment parties with my friends. Apartment parties, that is almost like a tongue twister. Also, you are so close to San Francisco and Oakland and just surrounded by so many fun things to do in the area. I had a great social time at Cal. I made lifelong friends. I feel like I always had something to do on the weekend. I always had a good time. Like Friday and Saturday nights for me were reserved for having fun and relaxing and kicking it back from my classes. So yeah, I think work hard, play hard is the best way to put it. I'm not quite sure what to title this next point. I wrote down in my notes, not generic education. And by that, I mean the classes at Cal are so in depth and interesting and just not basic at all. Like, yeah, we offer like early American history and like later American history. But as soon as you get into those upper dips across different majors, not just history, you get such detailed and interesting classes that focus on things that I would have not even thought to study before attending Cal. And even within those classes that are a little bit more generic, Eric. I think because the professors at Berkeley are doing such interesting research and are so well connected in their fields, they're going to bring up some cool research and some interesting things that otherwise I don't think that I would have learned about. 
I'll put a sampling here of history classes that I took or at least I wanted to take because again Berkeley is a huge public university so even if a class is really cool and interesting and you want to take it just know that registration is very difficult and even in my third year at Cal because I graduated early so like my senior year like I still struggled to get the classes that I wanted my final point is that pretty much everyone at Cal is hardworking, smart, and passionate. And for some people, this kind of lends to Cal feeling very competitive and giving people imposter syndrome. But I'm here to tell you, if you decide to go to Cal, like you are smart, you are probably very hardworking. You're also probably very passionate about whatever it is that you want to study. And don't forget that once you go to Cal, like just because other people around you are shining, doesn't mean that you are not shining as well. I think that it's very easy to feel overwhelmed and like everybody else around you is doing better and bigger things than you, but just stay focused on your path and know that what you are doing is right for you and just think, are, am I trying my hardest? Am I making decisions that are good for me? And am I doing the best with the resources given to me? Then like, you're chilling, you're fine. Like take a deep breath, you're gonna be okay. And so if you're worried about the competitive atmosphere coming into Cal, like it's definitely something to consider, but. I viewed it from just the totally opposite perspective, like people at Cal are so smart and it's just incredible and being surrounded by those people just kind of pushed me to achieve my best and also gave me so many resources that were very easily accessible like, oh my friend does this awesome thing, let me ask them about it or oh this alumni from a club I'm in works here, let me ask them about that experience, maybe they'll give me a reference. Okay, that is all my 10 points of things that you should consider before coming to Cal. Overall, I had a great experience at Berkeley. I definitely had my low points. I definitely faced some struggles. Like, it was not all sunshine and daisies. But overall, great experience. Very glad that I picked Cal. I think that I made the right decision in going out to California and making that leap. And if you have something that you want me to talk about, possibly being a humanities major at Cal or being out of state or graduating early or anything else, just leave a comment down below and I'll make that video. And also if you have questions, like comment them down below and I'll answer them. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you got to this point. I appreciate you. If you liked this video, give it a little thumbs up. And if you liked me and want to see more content, then hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks. Bye.